Underrated dunkers in the NBA. We know NBA greats like Michael Jordan and Clyde Drexler were all-time great dunkers, but what about the under-the-radar dunkers throughout the last 20 seasons? There are a few future NBA Hall of Famers on this list that were known for one thing on the court, but not for their dunking. There are some role players on here who were underrated dunkers, and just players who don't get put in the great dunkers category that you would find Vince Carter, Jason Richardson, and Julius Irving in. Of course, if you disagree that a player on here is underrated or not underrated, let me know. I know you guys will leave a constructive comment of why I am wrong to have this person on the list and not this other player. It's cool if you disagree, I want to see other people's opinions. This originally was going to be a top 10 list, but there were some players I could not leave off here, so there's going to be more than 10 on here. The list is in no order, so let's go into the first player. Manu Ginobili, a four-time champion with the San Antonio Spurs and sixth man of the year in 2008. He is more known for his crafty dribbling, layups, and shot making at the three-point line, but he has a long list of highlights of dunking over the top of multiple players. He is completely fearless and does not care who is there guarding the rim, even Yao Ming, who stands at 7'6", and he was no match for Manu on this dunk. And a lot of Manu's best dunks are aggressive, one-hand dunks over the top of multiple defenders, he had a dunk against the Lakers where he crossed over someone and dunked over two players. And this past postseason against Houston at 39 years old, he slammed a right hand dunk over the top of Ryan Anderson. It looked like he was going to go up with his left, but he went up with his right and turned his body slightly the other way to keep Anderson's reach away from him. Shout out to Manu, man. Definitely an underrated dunker. Let's go into number two. Desmond Mason, a 12 point per game scorer, most known for playing with Milwaukee and Seattle, is a really underrated in-game dunker. He did win a dunk contest in 2001, but I feel like he gets forgotten about from that early 2000s NBA era. You had guys like Vince Carter, Kobe Bryant, and Jason Richardson who were all recognized as great dunkers, but you can't forget about Desmond because he has some of the best in-game dunks around that time. This guy would fly on alley-oops, I mean really fly over the top of people in a half-court setting or in a fast break. Mason had this combination of power and finesse on his dunks that made all of them unique and memorable. He even had a left-handed dunk over the top of four-time Defensive Player of the Year winner Ben Wallace. We remember Ray Allen for his all-time great three-point shooting and clutch shot making, but in his athletic peak on the Milwaukee Bucks and the Sonics, he was very athletic and could really dunk the ball. He could slash to the rim. Ray had a right-handed dunk over the top of Tracy McGrady in the 2001 playoffs that tied the game. And even when he was declining athletically later in his career on the Celtics and Heat, he had a few nice dunks here and there. I remember in the NBA Finals, he kind of stiff-armed Marco Bellinelli on a fast break and dunked past Danny Green. J.R. Smith, you guys gotta let me know if I am wrong here because he is known for his dunks when he was on the Nuggets and the Knicks and he did compete in a dunk contest, but I really wanted to put J.R. on this list and talk about him in the video. I believe J.R. is more on the underrated side. He has some of the best in-game dunks I've seen in my lifetime and was ridiculously athletic in his athletic prime. J.R. could dunk over the top of people, he could twist his body in a way to avoid the defense and still make a nice dunk. Athletic peak JR was so fun to watch. Again, let me know. I think JR is on the underrated side in my opinion. 13 years in the NBA, Trevor Ariza is definitely a really underrated dunker. He only played two seasons with the Lakers, but a lot of his best poster dunks came in those two years and in his first year with Houston. He is six foot eight with a seven foot two wingspan, so once he rises up, he can make it tough for any center to block his dunks. Ariza is a little bit older now, so he doesn't attempt as many poster dunks, and he's more of a spot-up shooter now in the Houston Rockets, but when he was younger and on a fast break or slashing down the lane, you might as well move out the way because he's going to do something very disrespectful to you. Kenyon Martin, the first big man on this list. He helped the Nets get the two NBA Finals in the early 2000s, a borderline double-double player in his prime, and he might be the second or first most aggressive dunker on this list. Kenyon would always get real turned up after his dunks. He was a great energy player for his whole career. Kenyon also played a long time with Carmelo Anthony and the Denver Nuggets in the 2000s and continued his power aggressive dunks on other teams. Gerald Wallace, he competed in a dunk contest when he was on the Kings and was selected to the first all-defensive team in 2010. 
He was one of the most athletic players in the league in his prime. Wallace had crazy jumping ability. He was stuck on the Bobcats for the majority of his prime, so he never got the praise I feel he should have gotten in his career. One of the better perimeter defenders from the 2000s. If he was on a playoff contending team, he definitely would be regarded higher in my opinion. Again, in his prime with the Bobcats, one of the better wing defenders in the league and the best dunkers. Jamario Moon, a bench player who played five seasons in the NBA. I remember him most from playing that one year with the Cavs. He also played for the Clippers, Raptors, Heat, and Charlotte. He was six foot eight with a reported 43 inch vertical, so he could really fly on all types of dunks from alley oops to slashing dunks and dunks in transition. Jamari Moon actually entered the draft in 2001, but went undrafted and moved around the D-League before getting picked up by Toronto in 2007. Richard Jefferson, when he was on that early 2000s Nets team with Jason Kidd, Vince Carter, Kenyon Martin, he was dunking on everybody. In his prime, a super athletic wing who could play both sides of the ball. He helped that Nets team get to two NBA Finals appearances. Jefferson also had a few memorable dunks when he was on the Dallas Mavericks. He is going to be 40 years old soon and he doesn't attempt as many dunks as he used to, but with the Cavs, he had a few memorable dunks on Christmas against the Warriors. He caught a bounce pass from Kevin Love and one hand slammed over Klay Thompson and dunked with his left hand past Kevin Durant. The franchise, Steve Francis, the number two overall pick in the 1999 NBA Draft, and he did compete in the 2000 dunk contest, but he got overshadowed by Vince Carter's performance. Francis is in the underrated dunker category in my opinion. He was only six foot three, but had a 43 inch vertical, so he could rise over bigger wing players and centers for a dunk if he got to the first jump before they did. In his athletic prime on the Rockets and the Magic, he could really explode out of a crossover and get to the rim. Let's go into the next player who is another athletic point guard. Baron Davis, another athletic point guard from the 2000s NBA era who had plenty of underrated dunks with Charlotte, Golden State, and New Orleans. This is a similar situation to Desmond Mason. Baron was kind of overshadowed by the other point guards in the early to mid 2000s. Davis averaged 16 points per game and seven assists in his career. And of course, Baron had one of the most memorable dunks in the playoffs ever. Back in the 2007 second round against the Jazz, Baron finished a right hand dunk over the top of Andre Karolinko. Jeff Green, back in his athletic prime on the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Boston Celtics, Jeff Green was a really powerful dunker. This is definitely another player on my list that I knew was perfect for an underrated dunker because right now Jeff Green is on a very forgettable Magic team and his dunks are just forgotten about. He is 6 foot 9 with a 7 foot 1 wingspan and a 38 inch vertical so he doesn't need much room to rise over the top of players and finish a dunk. Green was a part of that young OKC Thunder team before getting traded to Boston in 2011. He averaged 16 points per game in his peak with them. Shannon Brown, who I remember the most from playing with the Lakers on those two championship teams in 2009 and 2010, he did compete in a dunk contest, but to me he fits the bill for an underrated dunker. Brown is 6 foot 4 with a 44 inch vertical, and it looks like he's using a bungee stick when he jumps off the floor. He was a role player, so he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves, but he's a really underrated dunker in my opinion. Last one on the list, I feel like I'm kind of reaching here because a lot of NBA fans remember Stroh Miles Swift's dunks, but I had to put him on here. I wanted to talk about Stroh Miles in this video. He has the most powerful dunk I've ever seen on YouTube. This two-hand dunk right here should be banned on here, to be honest. Swift was drafted second overall in the 2000 NBA draft and averaged eight points per game for his career. He never panned out how scouts predicted him, but hey, he's got the most powerful dunk on YouTube. That's it for me. Of course, if you disagree with the list, let me know who I should have had on here. The channel is at 23K subscribers, so shout out to you guys for coming through and supporting the videos. I will see you guys in my next video.